so transitioning kind of back to uh, your composing, um, I know uh, you've been open about the fact that a lot of your music kind of arises from times of, of personal devotion, um, which is uh, not many of the more traditional church music composers, I feel like, say things like that. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. You know, um, all writers, whether you're a composer or a poet or an author, we write what we know and we write what we live. And um, most of my pieces have a my faith based journey just built in because that's what I know and that's what I live. And it's really it's the oddest thing being a composer um, where I know that on any given Sunday, my story is in church choir folders all over the world and people are touching it and they're singing and they're rehearsing and they're penciling things on top of it. Um, it's a weird feeling to turn in a song to my editors and um, <clears throat> they might put a red question mark over one of the phrases that had significance to me in my life or that showed vulnerability or maybe some of the fragility of my story. Um, or maybe when there's times when I'm presenting my music at a big reading session with lots of people and, and packets that are stuffed full of anthems. And then as I'm walking off the stage, I see one of my faith journey songs in someone's discard pile, you know? So, and that's just part of it, but it's a really odd feeling to see people touching my journey and singing my scars and my wounds, it, it's, it's like I said, it's odd. I don't know of another word for it. But I often tell people that if you want to know how God's chisel is shaping me, then to just look at the songs that I'm writing. And not every song is God's chisel, but many of them are. Um, most composers, well, I'm going to say all, if, if, we're, if we're decent, <laughs> we have a thumbprint, a musical thumbprint. We have a signature style even for those of us who like to write in lots of different styles. Um, and apparently my signature is that I write songs that make people cry, I guess. I have been told that over and over and over and over. <laughs> um, in fact, you know, just a couple of days ago, I stumbled on this random Facebook post by someone I don't think I even know. And it said, is it even a Sorensen song if you don't cry? <laughs> That's really ironic. But, you know, writing my faith journey into music especially ones that carry some of my heaviness, it comes at a cost, it costs me. Because in order to write about it, you have to live it. And so you live it, and then you live it again when you write it, and then you live it again when you perform it. Or in my case, when I'm in different churches and in different concerts with different groups all the time, so I'm constantly representing it, to people, and so there are some scars that have healed, but they will always be fresh mm -hmm. because that story keeps getting reopened. You know, yeah. it, also there are some wounds that I will never write about, at least not yet, because they haven't healed and there would be too many people's hands all over it and it would just, it would make it worse. So um, again, I don't know if that answered your question but that's a little bit into my thought and I, I don't know how to write any other way <laughs> people tell me you're so transparent in your music but that's the only way I know how to write music I don't I don't do any other way that yeah. story if I can interject that story uh reminds me of one of my granddads uh, who <clears throat> had kind of a rough uh early life uh and got saved out of that uh and became a preacher, you know, at, at a point later in life. Uh, and when he would preach, he always wound up crying. Mm. And, you know, and, and he said one time, I, we, we didn't live right next to them, but periodically we would visit and go to church with them. And it just so happened, I was in one of their church services one day, and he told this story, and he said, you know, I felt like every time I tried to preach, I was just crying and making a mess of things. And he said, I prayed that God would take away the tears so that I could preach. 
Mm -hmm. uh, without them being a hindrance. Mm -hmm. And he said that God answered that prayer, but it was in the end not a good thing because mm -hmm. when he lost the tears, he, he found himself in a very dry place spiritually mm -hmm. to the point where he got, uh, he started praying the reverse, you know, give me the tears back. And and thankfully God did, and He restored that emotional connection for Him to some of the things, you know, that had happened in the past. I think when you come out, you know, it's unfortunate that as humans, that bad experiences help us better appreciate the good experiences. And you know, living sometimes when we live very sinful lives, this is not your case, of, of course. But in his case, it was you live a sinful life. And then when you realize there's a better way, God's way, and you get saved, put your faith and trust in him, the distance that you come is so emotional that you really can't cover it up. And that's kind of what I thought of when you were telling how your music, you know, has that emotion that evokes the tears in people. Uh, to me, the signature that you're talking about really is an, a truly an understanding of what we have in God, you know, that, that maybe people that didn't have the kind of experiences you had just, they haven't come to a place where they can fully grasp that. And hopefully when they sing your music, when they hear your music, it gives them some clarity on what that is so that they can grasp it. Right. Uh, and so that's, that's what I, thought of when I, when I heard you telling that story. And yeah, I think that's one of the powers of music is it takes us places emotionally that we could not go otherwise. I enjoyed hearing that. And that because there have been so many times the last few years when I've asked God to give me a different song. Um, it's like, okay, I know that you use my grief, but have I not filled my quota? Um, mm -hmm. Can you let me live songs of joy? And God does give me joy. And I'm not saying that there is no joy in my life, but he seems to want to operate my ministry out of grief and pain. And so that's good for me to hear because um, I never want to get to the point where I'm comfortable and not as usable anymore. Mm -hmm. 